morning and welcome to worship at Slackwood Church, whether you're one of the brave souls who are with us in person or if you're with us online, we hope you feel very welcome. We, presently, we have two orders of worship, if you haven't noticed. There's an outdoor order of worship and there's an indoor order of worship. And when the bulletin was done this week, we were going to be outside. So today we have an outside order of worship inside. We're not really trying to totally confuse you, although it does force you to follow the bulletin, which gets printed every week. So uh, just be aware that things are just a little different today. I do want to point, uh, point out several of your announcements. The Property and Finance Committee will meet after worship today. The session meets on Wednesday night. Next, Sunday, next Saturday, June 18th at 2 o'clock, the Truth and Reconciliation Group will be showing the film Freedom Writers in Fellowship Hall, and there'll be time for a discussion afterwards, conversation afterwards, and we urge all of you to come out for that. Also, I have been running an announcement every week about helping out with the Christian Education Committee of uh, Children during worship and Sunday school. Let's step up, folks. We, we, and every time we baptize a baby, we agree to nurture that child in the faith. That responsibility falls on all of us, not just the Christian Education Committee. So please talk to STAR about ways that you can help to nurture these young people in our church. Are there other announcements? Scott. Yes, uh, come on, this week, June 16th, will be my 15th wedding anniversary in Glasgow. June, June 15th or 16th? 16th, 16th. 16th wedding anniversary. Congratulations, it's Scott. Years. Excellent. Other announcements? Sandy. Our grand old flag, Tuesday's um, Jim's birthday. Jim Branson's birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday. Others. Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who spoke in the beginning and created something out of nothing. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who took off the clothing that the man had taken and set up those who are dressed as Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we seek you. Together we lift up our spirits and call on your name that you might abide with us. Bless this, our worship of you, that we might sing for joy under the shadow of your wings. Amen.
You may be seated. Let us use our voices to declare those things we have said and done that have separated us from God and from each other, that we may experience God's mercy and receive God's forgiveness. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear the prayers of your people. For every time we have attributed your miracles in our lives to our own hands alone, forgive us. For every time we have promised to trust you, but turn to our own way when your response did not come soon enough or in the way we expected. Grant us mercy for the many opportunities to extend forgiveness that we have refused. Show us what it means to extend compassion for each way we put our own understandings above your wisdom. For each time we resist your command, to be reconciled with those who believe differently from us, direct us in the way to peace, our sins, our quiet acts of violence, and our indifference to the suffering around us. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Amen. Siblings, God is at work in us and with us. Hear the promise of God, even when we are still far off from what we are called by God to be. Our God sees us and is filled with compassion. God rejoices over each of us. Amen. The first scripture reading is Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
morning. Our text for this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Listen for the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Before we get started, will you please pray with me? God, we are thankful that you are a God who shows us your hope in this world. Let us open our hearts to the hope that you have for us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. This week, I was on the train on the way to work, and typically, about twice a week, someone gets on the train and plays some kind of music. The people on the train never look up. If you've ever been on a subway in New York City, you know that the general rule of thumb is that you don't acknowledge anything happening around you, but you should always know everything that is happening around you. Once, <clears throat> recently, a guy like literally climbed the wall next to me and I acted like I didn't see him. It's a wild time. Last week, a person got on the train playing an accordion, a very loud accordion, I might add, at 8.30 a.m. before I'd had my coffee, which means I was a little annoyed. Adults are often like this, a little bit cynical. We think of all the ways that we're inconvenienced. We think of all the things that could go wrong. But this little girl sitting next to me was overjoyed. She's like dancing and clapping and whispering to her mom about how cool the accordion is. And when the man was done, she pulls a dollar out of her pocket and she hands it to the musician. And it was beautiful. I was just thinking about everything I had to do for work that day. But she was so earnestly focused on the joy that this musician brought to her life that morning. People talk a lot about core memories, things that we hold on to that might seem small to others. And I wonder if this is a core memory for her. Riding the train to school with her mom and her brother, listening to the music of New York City. She couldn't have been much older than five or six, but she had so much hope and joy. How beautiful. I think that we are quick to operationalize suffering. I can name lots of places where we claim that you have to experience pain to get to beauty. And I can name lots of places that make money off of this claim. No pain, no gain, right? Our text this morning tells us that suffering produces endurance, which produces character, which produces hope. That suffering produces hope. And as I was writing this sermon, I realized that I don't know that I believe that. I don't know that I can stand here and tell you that suffering produces hope. I think if suffering really did produce hope, we'd have a whole lot of hope. And it seems to me like life keeps tearing away at that. I think many of us have encountered biblical texts that we have big questions about or that we don't believe. And I don't think it makes the Bible any less holy 
to admit that sometimes we have questions or we have doubts about what we've read. And typically when I encounter this, I try to find some piece of truth or good news in the text if I can. And so I want to propose today that we read this text backwards or run it back, if you will. I would, I would like someone to tell me if I did the sports metaphor correctly later. <laughs> what about a hope that produces character, that produces endurance to face the suffering in the world? I understand that this might feel like semantics to you, but let me explain why it's not. We don't have the tools for moving suffering into hope anymore. The suffering to hope framework forces us to try to find the good in suffering and to try to find the good in everything even when it doesn't exist. And I'm not sure after the past few weeks that's fair to ask of us anymore. When people can be killed with weapons that you can purchase without restriction, when legislatures regularly target trans and queer kids with laws that regulate gender affirming care and representation, when white supremacists continue to commit hate crimes, I don't know that it's okay to keep saying exclusively suffering produces hope. We should not have to endure suffering to get to hope. I think this puts us in a position where we value the trauma that people experience more than we value their hope. And so what about a hope that produces character, that produces endurance to face the sufferings in this world? The first thing that we have to do here is define hope because I've said it a lot and I think I still have some questions. Our faith does a great job at giving us a foundation for this. Today is Trinity Sunday, and I think the Trinity is a great example of the ways that Christian hope works, that God always finds a way to be with God's people, whether through the liberating and saving power of Jesus Christ or through the movement, comfort, and prophetic power of the Holy Spirit that calls us into action. God is always at work in this world. During Advent, we sing, Come, thou long expected Jesus. During Lent, we fast in anticipation of a God who shows up to save us all. During Holy Week, we hold despair even though we have hope. Even though we know that Easter morning is around the corner, our church calendar is one giant nod towards hope. What does it mean to be Christian if it does not mean that we have hope that we can confront suffering because we know how the story ends? What does it mean to have hope if it does not mean that we can face evil head on even when we are tired, that we can weep with those who weep? that our hearts can break wide open because we know that when they do, hope will spill out. Like this text tells us, the love of Jesus has been put in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. This matters deeply. Because if we don't have hope, what's the point? Maybe you've thought about volunteering somewhere recently this past month, but you didn't because you're tired, or because with all the bad stuff happening in this world, the little stuff doesn't seem to matter anymore. Maybe you thought about calling your representatives, but you didn't. What does it even matter when everyone is so beholden to money? Will my one call even make a difference? Maybe you thought about calling someone this week, but you didn't. Maybe you thought that other people have already called, Maybe you thought your call wouldn't matter. Maybe you've thought about praying this week, but you didn't. What does it even matter? Everyone says prayers don't do anything anyway. Cole R. 
Martha Riley is the author of Black Liturgies, and she writes, the truth is, my hope is mangled. It limps and creaks at night. You speak of hope like a white bird soaring. It's okay that mine is the battered exhale, a bench with splintered wood. Friends, I am here to tell you that every time you take an action that is rooted in the hope that things can get better, it matters. Even if it is more like a battered exhale than anything else. And so how do we cultivate this? First, I think that we have to go looking for hope. Where do you see the ways that creation is moving forward? Where do you see hope in this world? Maybe there's hope for you in the way that creation is constantly regenerating. Tomorrow, after all of this rain, the grass and the trees will be a lush green. Maybe that's hope for you. Maybe you find hope in future generations, maybe in your kids or your grandkids or your kiddos that you get to be around. Maybe you find hope in a little girl riding the train next to you. Maybe you find hope in your community. Maybe the way your people love each other and care for each other well makes you hopeful and makes you believe that there is still good in this world. Maybe you find hope in knowing that the way that you show up in suffering and in pain matters. Maybe you find hope in showing up. Our text today tells us that the hope that we have does not disappoint us. Friends, there's a lot of evil in this world, and I don't have to tell you that. And in the face of all of that, we are called to have hope. We are called to face down suffering because we have hope that things can change. Because we have hope that small actions do really matter. And so this week, I want you to go looking for hope. If you don't find it, start small. Pray for hope. Start there. Sign a petition. Make a phone call. Check in on someone that you know is hurting. Know that in all of these ways, in all of these ways, your presence and your voice matters and it brings hope into this world. And hope does not disappoint. Friends, hope does not disappoint. Amen.
please pray with me. Lord, we come before you today as people in need of hope, as people in need of strength to get through the day. We pray that you would be with us as we worship together and as we go throughout this week. And Lord, we give prayers of praise and thanksgiving and gratitude with Patrick. And Lord, we also pray for guidance and direction because we know that your Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. And this morning we know that many of us are weary and so we pray for a sense of grace for us. We pray that you would be with us, that you would remind us to be still and breathe, that you would listen to what you are telling us in these seasons. And so we pray for a sense of trust for Jenny, for Chloe, and for Lily. And Lord, we know that this life isn't always easy, but your word tells us that the beloved of the Lord rests between your shoulders. And so we pray for that rest. We pray that those who are going through difficult times can find rest between your shoulders. And Lord, if they can't find that rest, let them know that you walk with them. And so we pray with and for Arlene, for Marilyn, for Mylan, for John, for Layla, for Jack and Beth and Arlene and Frank and Diane and Carol. And now let us pray in the way that God has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our debt, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our gifts of our time and our talents and our tithes are one of the ways that we participate in hope for this world. Your gifts are a reminder that God is always at work in this world. And so they can be dropped in the plates as they get passed, or they can also be mailed to the church if you're worshiping with us online at 2020 Brunswick Avenue, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, 08648. Let us worship God with our giving. for these gifts that we have received. We thank you for the ways that you use them in your kingdom to bring hope into this world. We ask that these gifts would all be a blessing to you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping with us in person this morning or who have a hymnal at home, our final hymn is number 772. 772.
My sincere hope that you go looking for joy and hope in this world, and that what you find will not disappoint you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. It's in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.